In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use the index and the match function to look up information. We're also going to talk about how to create a drop down menu with those two functions as well. So let's talk about the index function. So if you type in equal index parentheses and let's select this entire array comma and then we have the row number that we need to choose. So let's pick row five and column four. So if you do this, notice what you'll get. So in row five, column four, we get the number 613-295-7486. And so the index function, it works like a, a GPS system, like a map. And it helps you to identify the contents of a cell if you specify the location of that cell. So you have to give the row and the column of that cell. The only time you need to use the row and the column is if you select an array with multiple columns. Notice what happens if we select just one column. For instance, let's use equal and type in index parentheses. So I'm only going to select column two. So therefore, I don't have to specify the column anymore. The only thing I need to specify is a row. So let's select row seven. So I'm going to close it here. And notice that it gives me the entry Kim Campbell because I only selected row two, I mean column two, and then row seven, so it matches Kim Campbell. So if you select one column as your array, then you don't need the column number anymore. All you need is the row. But if you select an entire array with multiple columns, then you need to specify which row and which column out of all these columns that you want Excel to locate a particular cell and the contents in that cell. Now let's talk about the match function. So let's type in equal match parentheses. So we need a lookup value and let's look up a specific cell, Sam Wilson found in B5. Now we need to select a lookup array. With the match function, you don't want to look up an array with multiple columns and rows. Rather, your array should only have either one column or one row. And then once we press comma, we're going to get the option to type in 1, 0, or negative 1. Let's choose 0 for an exact match. And then close the parentheses. So notice what we get. We get 5. So what does that tell us? This tells us the position in the column. So Sam Wilson is in position 5. 1, well, you got to start here because we selected the entire column. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So he's in row 5 in column 2. Now, let's use the match function but in the horizontal direction. So let's choose Sam Wilson again. This time, the lookup array will be row 5. And let's choose 0 again. So notice that in row 5, he is located in column 2 or position 2. So the match function tells us the position of a cell if we select a row or column. So if we select a row, it's going to tell us the column number. If we select a column, it's going to tell us the row number. Now let's talk about how we can use these two functions together to look up information. So let's write down a few things. Let's put the customer ID. We're going to look it up based on uh, the customer ID. And we're going to look up the things such as the customer's full name, his email address, phone number, annual income, and the customer's age. So let's resize that column. Now let's look up this customer. Let's say if we have the customer ID 13485-2947. So let's say if we want to look up the customer's full name using the index and the match function. Type in equal 
index and then we need to select the column that has his full name and so that's going to be this column a2 to a9 and then comma now we need to match it we need to use the match function and so we're going to use cell c11 because that's where we're going to enter the custom id we've already entered it but right now you can't see it now the custom id is located in column a so we're going to select a2 to a9 if we select b2 to b9 in the index function we need to select a2 to a9 in the match function those two they have to have the same length and then the match type let's select zero and then close again so notice that it gives us the full name for custom ID 13485-2947 which is Sam Wilson now if we change the custom ID let's say if we change it to 12948-2745 it gives us someone else Kenny Johnson now let's repeat the process for the next field for email so if we click on Kenny Johnson we can repeat what we have here the only thing we need to change is the column from B2 to B9 to C2 to C9 everything else is going to be the same so we can type in equal index and let's select the column for email and then comma match now the lookup value will still be C11 for custom ID because we need to match it with that custom ID the lookup array will be the column with the custom ID comma zero and so now we get his email address now sometimes you may try to extend it but it doesn't always work however we could fix it if we want to so now let's do the same thing but for the next column so the lookup value will stay the same the lookup array will still be the same and the match type we're going to keep it zero so now we have the phone number for Kenny Johnson which is 708 and then you know you can see the rest of the numbers now for the annual income we're going to choose this column and then just repeat the process with the same lookup array and everything else will be the same and finally for the age so let's highlight this column match and then C11 A2 to A9 and so forth now let's see what's gonna happen if we change the custom ID so let's type in 10347 dash 27 Eight, five. and look at that everything changes so for this custom ID we have the full name John Smith his email his phone number his annual income and his age so just by changing one field we can get everything that we need to know about this particular customer so let's say if we use a different custom ID 10275 and dash 4385 so input in that custom ID everything about that customer is retrieved so we have her name Juliet Michaels her email phone number income age and so forth now another way in which we could look up information is by creating a drop-down list so first let me expand this area let's type in customer ID and let's choose Rachel Garcia 13854-2482 now what I'm gonna do is create a drop-down list so if you click data and then data validation now you'll see this box open in the section where it says allow instead of having any value choose a list and then for the source you can click this button and we're gonna highlight full name email phone number annual income and age 
click OK. Now, notice that we have this drop down button, this arrow. If we click it, we can select the customer's full name, email, phone number, annual income, or age. So whatever we want to find about the customer, we can select it with this uh, drop down box. Now, if you deselect it, you may not know where the drop down box is. So what you could do is you can uh, change the background color. Let's choose blue. So when you deselect it, this tells you that this is a drop down uh, cell. It's different from everything else. Because once you deselect it, the arrow is no longer visible. So you need a way to tell you or to tell someone uh, which cell is a drop down list. Now let's talk about how we can retrieve the contents of a cell if we're given the customer ID and any field in this drop down list. So let's use the index and the match functions. So let's type in equal index. Now instead of choosing a single column, we need to choose multiple columns because it can be age, it can be annual income, we could select phone number, we could select the full name. So we need to go from A2, I mean B2 rather, to F9. And then we're going to open with the match function. Now we're going to use the match function for the customer ID in the same way we've used it in cell C11. But this time the customer ID is located, the information for the customer ID will be located in cell F11. And then what we need to do next is select the information for the custom ID. And so that's going to be this column, A2 to A9. Since we went from B2 to F9, we have to go from A2 to A9. We can't go from A1 to A9. It's not going to work. And then we're going to choose 0 for exact match. Now we're not going to close the parentheses a second time because we need to use the match function but for the second option. We've used it the first one for the custom ID. Now for the second one, we need to use it for the drop down list because it can be age, annual income, email, and so forth. So we're going to have match, and then we're going to select cell E12 because that's where the drop down list is located, comma. Now we're going to select a row rather than a column. So from B1 to F1, we're only going to select that because the drop down list only contains information in that region. We have age, annual income, phone number, email, full name. The drop down list only contains the contents of those five cells. So that's why we only need that row. And then comma is zero for exact match. And then we're going to close the parentheses twice. Once we hit the enter button, we can see that the age for this particular customer will show up. And so for customer with the ID 13854-2482, that's Rachel Garcia, we can see her age is 24. Now if we change it to her phone number, we can see it pops up 493-284-3741. Now let's change the custom ID. So let's choose 213-69. 3749. And let's say we want to look up the email address of this customer. So the customer with that ID is Greg Larson, and we can see that we have his email address. So that's how you can look up someone's information with two fields with their customer ID, and then you can match that with the full name, the email address, or anything. So let's do another example. Let's select the customer ID for Juliet. And let's say we want to look up her annual income. And you can see it pops up 135,000. And so that's how you can use a drop down list with the index and the match function uh, to look up stuff.